Are you accelerating in here? Are you developing in here? You better be. You better be. If not, I don't know what we're doing on these Wednesday nights. But uh, anyways, we've got, to, we've got to learn to live to listen to God. Live your life to listen to God. Listen to him. Like we just said, we, we just took some time. It was just completely quiet. God was speaking in there. And I'm sure he probably told you something. He told me many things. And he's always speaking to me. But tonight for um, Wednesday Night Lead, I want to focus a lot on the L again. I focus on a lot of the L's a lot of times because living is so important. Um, but live to listen to God. And I wanted to talk about the difference between hearing versus listening. There is a difference. There is hearing and then there is listening. Y'all like my graphic? That's pretty cool. I'm a, I like music, so of course we had to, you know, make that graphic. Thanks, Jensen, wherever you're watching. Speaking of Jensen, she's doing great. The baby's doing great. <laughs> Baby Beckham's doing wonderful. Um, nine days old now. What the heck? Already nine days. Uh, she's still at nine days. She's still paying no rent. Um, and uh, luckily I don't have to pay, buy food for her. Mom's doing all the work. So, um, yeah, not having to buy groceries there, but. Hopefully, she'll uh, start learning to mow the yard soon, and we can go from there. So, hearing verse, listening. Do you have your Bible? Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 3, and it's going to be up here for you guys, but I'm actually going to read it from my Bible tonight. And usually I don't, it's crazy, usually I have like everything on my iPad, but tonight it just felt like I'm going to have some scriptures on my iPad, but we're going to, we're going to go here and 1 Samuel chapter 3, it says, The boy Samuel was serving God under Eli's direction. This was at a time when the revelation of God was rarely heard or seen. One night, Eli was sound asleep. His eyesight was very bad. He could hardly see. It was well before dawn, and and the sanctuary lamp was still burning. Samuel was still in bed in the temple of God where the chest of God rested. Then God called out, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, yes, I'm here. Then he ran to Eli saying, I heard you call. Here I am. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And so he did. Anyone have kids like that? They come around. Did you call me? No, we didn't. I can't say that. My baby, I'm not calling her yet. But anyways, this is for you parents. God called again, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli. I heard you call. Here I am. Again, Eli said, son, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. This all happened before Samuel knew God for himself. Man, we got so many people that don't know God for himself. You want to know the God that you know? You know uh, Brody's God. Don't, don't live knowing just Brody's God. You got to know God for yourself. Don't be living on someone else's revelation. Don't be living on someone else's God. You better know him for yourself because he wants to talk to you. He wants to speak to you. Mm. I'm going to preach tonight. Is that I'm going to preach sitting down. There's Warren at. There he is. He didn't know God for himself. It was before the revelation of God had been given to him personally. God called again Samuel the third time. Yet Samuel, again Samuel got up and went to Eli. Yes, I heard you call me. Here I am. That's when it dawned on Eli that God was calling the boy. So Eli directed Samuel, go back and lie down. If the voice calls again, say, God, say, speak, God. I'm your servant, ready to listen. Samuel returned to his bed. Then God came and stood before him exactly as before. I love that. He came and stood before him. Mm. Calling out, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak. I'm your servant ready to listen. God said to Samuel, listen carefully. Listen carefully. See, I wonder how well do we actually listen to God or we, do we just hear him as white noise? Or do we just hear him as blah, 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 not actually speaking to us? See, I really desire, I think a lot of us desire to be like Samuel where he says, speak, your servant is listening. Your servant is listening. So I want to ask you this morning, are you listening? The difference between listening and hearing is hearing is always occurring. 
you're always hearing things. You know that? You're hearing my voice right now. Are some of you listening? I hope so. If you go outside right now, what are you going to hear? You're going to hear some trucks driving. You're going to hear crazy noise. You're probably going to hear some music over here at the gym because they got a speaker outside. You're going to be hearing all kinds of stuff. I was sitting outside the other day, and finally I just said, man, I hear all these birds, but I just want to listen real quick because you can hear so much. But then I started actually listening, and you could hear that this one bird would start, and then you got one over here. I'm like, they're communicating. They're talking to each other. So hearing is always occurring. Now, listening is actually taking action by the listener. It's you're taking action with what you actually hear. So you have to choose to listen, and it brings forth action. So there's this parable. You can go there if you want. We're not going to read uh, most of it, but um, it's in Mark chapter 4, and it's uh, the parable of the scattered seed. It's the farmer planting the word. And in verse 9, it actually says, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. So yes, not only are we hearing, but we're going to listen. But in Mark chapter 4, uh, you don't have to go there, but Jesus starts telling this parable, and then um, he says that the farmer, uh, the seed fell. He's scattering seed, and some of it fell by the road, which the birds came and ate it, um, which actually translates to Satan came um, and ate it. And then the seed fell by the rocky ground, and it had no depth for the soil. So that's a lot of people having joy, but no foundation. It's a lot of people hearing the word of God, but there's no foundation actually there. Then it says some seed fell by the thorns, and when that came up, it choked it out. So that's just going that people can hear the word, but they have more desire in other things. We can't have more desire in other things, and then their life it becomes unfruitful. Then it says seed fell on good soil, and it grew up, and it increased 30, 60, and 100-fold. So it means you heard the word, you bared the fruit, and then 30 and 60-fold and then a hundredfold. But in Mark chapter 4, verse 24, I think I have it on my phone. I'm going to pull it up. I got like all different kinds of translation stuff. I don't even know if they have that one up there. But Mark chapter 4, verse 24, it says this. Consider carefully. Before I even say this, before this whole parable, Jesus says multiple times, listen. He says it. Look in your Bible. He says, listen. So if Jesus is saying, listen, what should we probably do? Listen talking to his disciples here. It says, consider, in verse 24, he says, consider carefully what you hear. He continued, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you and even more. So, the way you hear the word is the way you measure and respond to the word, and it's the measure that the word works in your life. So, I'm going to say something very important right here. A 30-fold mentality never excels to 100-fold opportunities. I'm going to say it again. A 30-fold mentality, what you hear, only 30%, only going to bring forth 30%. What you do with only 30% of the words, only going to bring forth 30%. So a 30-fold mentality never excels to 100-fold opportunities. And we got people one 100-fold opportunities with only 30% mentality. Only want to come to church once a month. Only want to get in your word once a year. But you want all everything that God has in store for you. He's got so much, but you better be hearing. You better be listening. See, how well are you connected to the vine, though? See, it talked about you bear fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. You don't produce the fruit. You just get to bear it. Jesus produces the fruit. But guess what? We get to hold it. We get to have it. Matthew chapter 10, verse 27. It says this. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. See, you got to hear from him in the quiet place before you take it to the streets. We got a lot of people that want to yell in the streets. We got a lot of opinions. We got a lot of people want to say some things. But you better hear it in the secret place first. You better get along with Jesus and let him talk to you and listen. 
before you go out to the rooftop. We, again, we got people, everybody wants to shout from the rooftops. Listen, before you start shouting. Ain't nothing wrong with shouting. You better believe I'm up here all, every Sunday. You, I'm yelling, I'm sweating, everything. But I'm listening before I'm yelling, before I'm shouting, before I'm talking. Before I'm <laughs> Warren God. Before you start posting on social media. Yeah, you better be listening. Thanks, Warren. Thanks, Warren. Write this down. You go where you're sent. God usually won't talk to you about what's next until you leave what's now. I tell you, I'm bringing it today. Woo. God usually won't talk to you about what's next until you leave what is now. Let me tell you in the Bible, Genesis chapter 12, God told Abram, get out of your father's house so I can take you to a place that I will show you. He didn't say, I'm going to take you to a place and this is what it is. See, a lot of people, they're scared to go with what's next because they don't know what, what is, what's next. You don't have to know what's next. But if God tells you where to go, you better go. You stay where you're put. You stay in God, until God tells you to leave. We got so many people, too, they want to they wanna go to what's next, but God hasn't even called them to what's next. Why? Because you haven't even been faithful with what you have now. You haven't even been faithful where you're at, where you're stepping, where you're standing, where you're working at. You're like, I just want a better job. But are you actually being faithful with the job you have? Are you showing up on time? Are you going above and beyond? Oh, man. There's, let, me, let me just stop the notes real quick. There's lots of people that don't really do what they're told. You tell them what to do and they never do it. Then you got people that do what they're told. Thank God. And then you got people that will go above and beyond what you tell them to do. And you want to know why the above and beyond people are getting further than you. It's called favor because why? They're going above and beyond. It's a little side note. Take it, put it in your pocket. You give what you've got until you're done. So we got you go where you're sent, you stay where you're put, and you give what you've got until you're done. And here's the thing, we're never done giving. And Jesus, he's never done giving. I want to take you to my journal. This was on Monday, staff prayer, 5, 6, 24. And I want to read you this moment. I usually don't share my journal stuff with people, but Jesus told me this. He says, I don't want you at my feet so I can say, wow, whoa, look at me. Look how awesome I am. It's so you can get everything you need from me. That's why he wants us at his feet. So you can get everything that you need. And then he goes on to say, it's all I want to do is keep giving to you. All he wants to do is keep giving. We serve a God that's a giver. And he just wants to give to you. Psalm 37, verse 7. Y'all still here tonight? Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Man, in this age, in this society, this culture, it's, uh, it's hard to get away from text messages. It's hard to get away from emails, minute-by-minute minute updates. It's really hard, but we have to learn the importance of being still with no distractions. You have to. Figure out a time. What works for you, man? For real. If it's 4 o'clock in the morning, let it be 4 o'clock in the morning. If it's on your lunch break, say, I'm just going to leave my phone in the break room and go out to my car for 10 minutes and just be silent. Like I said, we don't have to say these big, amazing prayers or anything. Holy's, holy's good enough. It's perfect. The angels, like Kevin said, they're around the throne just saying, holy, holy. But you got to learn to be still, be patient, and wait. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13. I love this one. This is, this is the message translation. It says, answering before listening is both stupid and rude. 
I'm going to read it again. Answering before listening is both stupid and rude. Have you ever done this to someone where they were talking to you and you already had an answer why they were talking to you? You already were ready to, and Rita's just looking at Dwayne. She's like nudging him. We all there, Dwayne. Don't worry, man. We're, we're like, we're ready to say, and then we say it before they're even done. Is it possible, though, that maybe we do the same thing to God? That he's talking to us, he's ready to talk to us, and we just keep interrupting him. Why would my answer be better than what he has to say? What he has to say is so much more important than what I have to say. My answer don't matter. What is he saying? John 10, verse 27 says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. See, one thing I love about sheep is they move together. They go together with each other. So I want to say we can even sometimes hear better and best in groups, being in church. It's easy to hear from God in church. Yes, your, your own prayer time, your own prayer closet, your silence with God, yes, you're going to hear from God. But a lot of times, I hear God being around people, being around other sheep, because we all a bunch of sheep. Yes. God wants to speak to us in church. God wants to speak to us at our connect groups. God wants to speak to us when we're hanging in with our friends, our best pals. Job 33, 14 through 15 says, For God speaks in one way and in two, though people do not perceive it, in a dream, in a vision of the nights, when deep sleep falls on men. See, all throughout Scripture, God spoke to a lot of people through dreams. You know he's still doing that? He will speak to you in dreams. Every time I have a dream, I always wake up, I'm like, God, is that from you? Some are like, no. Others, like, instantly, as soon as I wake up, I'm like, that was, God gave me that dream. But Haley talked about it. She had a dream. She spoke this past Sunday, and it was a spiritual dream. Kevin has a lot of those. I mean, he wants to speak to you even in your dreams. So write them down. When you have a dream, man, I got, like, this on my notes section in my phone, I like have a dream section where when I have like actual spiritual dreams, I write them down so I can remember them. Because maybe they're not for right in that moment, but maybe they're for later. Okay, so first, for someone to speak with you and for you to actually listen, you must be in a relationship. Be in a relationship with Jesus so he can speak to you. Now, some, someone just came random up to me while I'm out in public and they start speaking to me, I, I might not really listen to them well because I don't know them. They might not want to speak to me anyways because they don't know me. But if we have a relationship, it's easy. Me and Zay, we talk on the phone all the time. So he listens to me. I listen to him. He hears me. I hear him. But it's because we have a relationship. Secondly, you must have a servant-type attitude. Know your place before God. You are a servant. Why is God talking to you? Why do you need to listen? Why? Because he has something that he wants to tell you because you're a servant. You're a servant. Thirdly, have an open ear to hear what God is saying to you and really listen to him. Have an open ear. Be willing to have an open ear. And lastly, act on what you hear from God. Act on it. You have to act on it. We talked about two Sundays ago the risk. You got seven seconds usually, they say. So when God speaks to you, you got, you got to act on it. Don't miss it. Don't miss the opportunity that he's talking to you and you don't actually listen. See, I know my Sunday school teacher, probably, I don't know. I know I think Sherry and Kit, they, they taught me in Sunday school a couple times or maybe as I was growing up or even in first grade, failed first grade. I didn't get many gold stars because I wasn't a good listener. You better believe now, though, God's given me some gold stars. Are you getting the gold stars for listening? 
Is he on your chart? Like, they listen to me. Gold star. Gold star. I'm getting those gold stars. It's so important to listen to God. And I want to share, um, and then I'm done. It's a little after eight. But it's so important to listen to God because he's always talking. Always. Me and Kid just, we had this conversation. He came to my house the other day. He was telling me, he's like, he's always talking. Most of my sermons, I just hear from God. He like shows me an illustration or I'm walking down the street. And he's, it's something like lights up and I'm like, oh my gosh, there it is. He's always talking, but the women had their prayer night on Monday night. And uh, my wife, you know, obviously she had a baby, so she couldn't come up and um, do the sound or anything, turn everything on. So I was like, all right, I'll drive in. We live a little closer to Ropesville. And uh, so I was like, I'll drive in. I'll turn everything off, but I turn everything on. But I'm not going to, like, go back home and then have to turn around back in an hour and come turn everything off. So hit up the guy over here, Carlos. I said, let's go eat, man. Let's go have dinner. And uh, get in his car, and we're driving, and we're like, where are we going to go to dinner? Had no idea. So we're like, oh, Chipotle. Oh, okay. How about... Bubba's, how about walk-ons? We couldn't figure it out, and then we just kind of really had the feeling like walk-ons was it. But then I said, you know what, let's just flip a coin. Let's flip a coin. Why not? Chipotle's out of the picture, but let's go to walk-ons. And, or let's go between Bubba's and walk-ons. So we flipped a coin, and it was walk-ons. And uh, I'm glad, because they didn't fail. And uh, so we're driving to walk-ons. Then we start passing Fazoli's. We hit the turnaround, you know, on the 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 North Loop, and uh, then we're passing Fazoli's, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really crazy with some breadsticks right now. So then Carlos is like, well, I'll go to Fazoli's, so we're about to turn around, and I'm like, you know what, I really just feel like we got to go to walk-ons. Don't know why, but you know why it sounds good? I want the hangover burger. It's got an egg on top. You put an egg on anything, I tell you what, it's better. I love eggs. My mom brought me eggs the other night, and she said, do y'all need anything at your house? We need some eggs. That's all we needed. And uh, we get to walk-ons. We sit down. This girl, 20-year-old girl, walks up to her table. Her name's Ari. She said, hey, I just want to let y'all know I'm having a really bad day. She goes on and tells and She said, and my boyfriend just broke up with me. We're like, Psh, what a loser. Can't believe it. But she said, even though I'm having a really bad day, I'm going to be your best waitress ever. So we said, praise God. Fast service, everything. She walks off, she comes, brings us our drinks. She's getting us our order. And uh, Carlos, on his burger, he doesn't want tomatoes on it. So, of course, I'm like, I'm not a t- I hate tomatoes anyway. So, we, for some reason, we get on a talk on tomatoes. And then uh, I say, you know what? Tomatoes, they actually say tomatoes help fight cancer. And then her face just kind of, like, dropped. But we didn't think anything of it. So, we go on to the whole tomatoes. Ha, 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 tomatoes, well, well, tomato, tomato, whatever. And so she leaves, she comes back, and then I just, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, do you go to church, anything? And, uh, you know, just not hitting on the girl. Carlos matter was. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And uh, we're just being friendly, man, just being real people, being real people. And uh, she's like, oh, I I used to go to church, but um, I kind of got away from it. She said the church I went to, real, you know. And I said, just because that church did that doesn't mean all churches are like that. And then she's like, I've been look, dabbling in other religions and back and forth. And uh, so then, of course, to pull out my wallet, said, I got an invite card. I said, I'd love for you to go and scan that message when you get time. And there's a message just for you, only for you. I said, take some time and uh, do it. She said, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. She's like, I, we're not allowed to have our phones. It's in the back. Um, it's locked up, but when we get off shift, we'll do it. And so then she comes back, and she's like, I really want to hear the message. So Carlos is like, I'll scan it for you. Here you go. So he scans it. He shows her, and she's watching it, and she's like looking at it. She's like this. It's you. And I'm like, is it? Is that me on there? That's crazy. She's like, you're like the youth pastor, right? And I said, no, I'm the senior pastor. (laughs) She's like, you actually are the head pastor of the church? I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, I like the beanie. I'm wearing a beanie in there. (laughs) So for all the people that don't like the beanie, ha, we like it. And so she's like, that's so cool. And I'm like, yeah, Jesus loves you. I said, we'd love for you to come to our church. And she's like, oh, well, I work on Sundays. I work on Wednesdays. And 
she's like, you got an app, or, you know, we, we showed her the app, or told her, you know, get on the app, you can go back, look at the, look at the sermons and everything, and I was like, um, I just said, she walked off, she came back, and everything in my spirit, again, I'm always listening to God, and in my spirit, I knew this girl was in so much pain, and so I was thinking, if she was in pain, all I kept thinking is, she probably lost a, a family member, and so she comes back, and I just asked her this question, and I'm like, I'm really, I'm like, God, I feel like I'm missing it. Am I missing it? And he just said, just, just talk to her. So she comes back, and I say, I know this is a weird question, but uh, did you recently lose a family member? She looked at me, and she was like, no. And I was like, I'm crazy. I'm a weirdo. But then she said, but can I tell you something else? I said, yeah. She said, I'm actually battling ovarian cancer right now. And she said, I go to the doctor again on Thursday at 1.30. She just opened up to us. Like, I completely, I knew she was in pain, but, you know, I'm thinking it's a fan. Like, what is a 20-year-old in pain for? Maybe they lost someone. I mean, what are they going through? She said, I'm battling ovarian cancer. And, and I said, I said, can we pray for you? And she was like, ah, I don't really know. I'm not really, I'm still kind of just filling out life and everything. And I said, that's fine. We don't even have to pray. I said, but Jesus loves you so much and you're so important to him. I said, do you believe that Jesus can heal you right now? And she said, yeah, I believe he can. I said, okay, your cancer's gone. Mike, did I really just say that? And she's like, I believe it. I believe my cancer's gone. I said, it is. And then she grabs all her plates. She comes back and of course, she comes back again, and I say, do you know how important you are? Do you know how valuable you are? Jesus loves you so much. I said, whenever you go on Thursday, I said, you're going to have a praise report because all that's going to be gone. And she's like, I believe it. And then, of course, you cannot tell someone about Jesus. You cannot love on someone this hard and not leave a good tip. I tell you what, if you start witnessing to people at restaurants and you leave some crappy tip, I'm going to be so mad at you. I'm going to come and I'm going to drop kick your door. So it was, only, it was only like $42 for me and Carlos. And I said, I said, what would make your day better? I said, you already got healed, which is already, who cares about your boyfriend? I said, you just, you just got free from cancer. I said, I said, what would make your day better? She said, just leave me 20%. I said, I can't leave you 20%. She said, no, 20% would make it so much better. So I, it's on, all on a screen. I said, how about a $100 tip? She said, oh, my gosh, you're going to make me cry. I'm like, it's not me. I said, Jesus just loves you so much, and he told me to do it. So then, guess what? After I left her a $100 tip, then we said, can we pray for you? Oh, yeah, now you can. <laughs> now you can. We grabbed her hands, me and Carlos, one on each side. We just started praying for this girl. We prayed for her life. We prayed for the plant. We prayed for complete healing. And then we went on our way. All because, why? We're willing to listen to God. Because he is always talking. And he wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to you while you're at Walmart. He wants to talk to you while you're at Bubba's. He wants to talk to you when you're at walk-ons. He wants to talk to you when you're sitting in this chair right now. He wants to talk to you when you're at home right now and the baby's crying and you don't know what to do. He's talking. It's just, are you willing to listen? Because we can hear. We can hear the chaos. We can hear everything. But listen. Listen to God. Amen. 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 Oh, Zay's got something. Yeah, Warren's got something too. Come on, Warren. Might as well. Come on. Come on, Zay. Come sit right here. We Open mic night. We love it. Who wants to go first? Zay. So I got up this morning, and this, the verse, uh, so faith comes, to my, comes from hearing and, and hearing by the word of Christ was on my heart. So I just got, got led right into Romans chapter 10 right there. So I'm reading in Romans 10, and there's some, a lot of really awesome verses, but two of them in particular, and now this message tonight, plus something else I'll tell you about in just a second. 14, 10, 14. This is Paul talking. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will then they believe in him who they have not heard? 
And how will they hear without a preacher? 15. How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. That's what Brody's talking about. But one thing I, I'm looking at right here, hearing, listening, there's another thing that comes with it, speaking. When you're given that to speak, you must speak it because that's what God wants us to do. You can't share good news with the lips closed. Okay, so these verses here this morning, and this is how I know this is really real to me. I was reading this this morning, and I ordered a package of bearings from a supplier, and it came in from Georgia, and I opened this box up this afternoon. Opened this box up, and it's got the receipt in it, and it has a little brochure, and it's the name of the company and what they sell and all that. And I'm looking, I'm like, yeah, man, I got my stuff. And I flipped it over. Romans. There they were, verse after verse after verse after verse, including these very verses. When God says something to you, you need to be listening to it because he might confirm it again if you, in case you didn't catch it the first time. Amen. Amen. Man, I love how this guy goes over different uh, translations. Check this out, okay? It, it ain't about me right now. It's about the word of God and God talking to you. Check this out. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13. This is the message translation. So roll up your sleeves. Get your head in the game. Be totally ready to receive the gift that is coming when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil, doing just what you feel like doing. You didn't know any better then. You know better now. As obedient children, let your as obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life. A life energetic, blazing with holiness. For God said, I am holy, so be holy. Do you want to know why you're not gonna get sifted like we like Miss Donna talked about? Because you're holy. Do you know the only way that you can be surrounded by God is because of the blood of Jesus on your life that makes you holy? We ought to listen to, like, a little bit of what he's saying because it's like, it'll, it'll help you for your eternal state. I'm going to say this real quick. Me and my boy Edwin were talking. Edwin's watching this guy like crazy. And he talked about how God looks at us. He doesn't look at us according to our past. He doesn't look at us according to our present. He looks at us according to our future. That's hope. Because sometimes I'm a scoundrel. Sometimes I'm a bonehead. And I'm like, God, I'm so sorry. Why did I talk to your creation like that? I didn't you know, realize how holy I am and how holy I can act. So when this world starts shaking, I'm not going to be shaken. When this world falls apart, I'm not going to fall apart. When this world gets dark, I'm going to shine brighter like the stars in the firmament, according to Daniel chapter 12. We're like a city set on a hill. Jesus is in us. Jesus is the what? The light of the world. So if he's in here, what are we doing playing with dark stuff? What are we doing giving a bad example to the next generation? Uh, Danny, Mason, and then little Taya's little, little, little soon-be baby. Bro, I, I, I can't think enough of Beckham this week. I'm just, I look at the picture you had in the hospital, and you're just looking at her, and you're like, you have this look, but you're looking at her, and I can see you're like, I'm a dad holding an innocent baby. I got a little bubble on there. I kind of messed with it. And, I, and he's like, please, God, don't let me mess this up. That, that's how God looks at us. He looks at his baby so innocent. Do you get it? Please get it right now before you leave this building. You are that innocent before God. Quit rolling around in the mud. Quit lazily slipping back into the old grooves of evil. God don't like that. He's like a, like if when, when, he, when Beckham grows up, when she grows up and she does something stupid, dad's going to love her, but he's going to be disappointed. 
He's like, baby, where did you learn that ignorant action? Who told you? Who lied to you and said that you were like that? I made you holy. I called you innocent, but you acting real foolish. So leave here if all you do is say holy. God's saying that back to all of you in here. Holy. Holy are you. Man, I love y'all so much. Thank you guys for taking me in this church because of this man of God. I'm just, I'm, please, Miss Donna's got so much in her. And look, it spawned into a Brody. <laughs> I mean, that's so cool. You feel what I'm saying? Like, guys, please, please leave here holy. If you're not acting holy, guess what you got an opportunity to do? Get it right. Because we're all adults in here. We all know our left hand from our right hand. So God is going to hold you accountable to what you know is right and what you know is wrong. So be holy. Amen. Amen. I'm going to leave you with this. Then we're done. I know we went like way over. We usually, but that's okay. You still here? Yes, listen to God. But what I love about God so much is he's listening to us too. And let me just tell you this quick story because I'm going to stand up because it's done. Uh, me and Jensen were talking two days ago, and we just said, I just said, man, I really want to witness to my neighbor. I really want to just like, I talk to him all the time, nicest guy you'd ever meet in your entire life. I said, I just want to know, I, know, I want to know his soul is going to heaven. Because same reason we talked to that girl at walk on Dude, it's about people's soul. No matter what they dress like, look like, talk like, think like, believe like, we're dealing with people's souls here. So I just said, man, God, I told Jensen, I said, let's just believe that an opportunity comes where I could just talk to him about Jesus. This was two days ago. We wake up yesterday morning. She's holding the baby, and we open up the blinds, and my neighbor with his tractor is cutting down all my wheat. He's just cutting it down because it was it's dead now. <laughs> Thanks. And it looks nasty, so he's cutting it all down. And so I said, I'm gonna go talk to him. I go out there, I start talking to him, and um, we just we just start talking about life and everything. And he said, Man, he said, I'd love for you sometime, me and you, let's get on the porch, let's drink some iced tea. And let's talk about the Bible because there's some questions that I have. I didn't, even, I didn't even tell him, like, he knows I'm a pastor. But God's listening because I said, God, just give me an opportunity to talk to him. And he says, let's sit on the front porch and drink some iced tea because I have some questions. I said, boy, I got some answers. And then he, and then he goes on and he says, how do you get your grass so green? I said, I water it just like we can water our spiritual life. And he looked at me, and I'm like, I'll wait till we get on the porch for the rest of it. So listen, listen, but also he's listening to us. Amen? All right, well, I love you guys. Thanks for coming to Wednesday Night Lead. God's doing something amazing here. I'll see you on Sunday for Mother's Day. Be blessed. Have a great rest of your week.